What's going on everyone? Jack here from Half Chrome. Today we're going to talk about this guy, the DJI Mavic Mini. Now a lot of people say, hey, the image transmission, the FPV feed is uh, breaking up as I get out there. Well, what does that mean? That means the video that you're watching on your screen, people are saying, isn't that great, right? We know that it relies on Wi-Fi technology to get you that video feed. So Chris and I were talking. We couldn't decide if we thought it was the same or better than the Spark or the Mavic Air. So we thought, hey, we need to do a test. So we took this guy and six of its friends for a spin around Chris's neighborhood, a heavy Wi-Fi area, and we recorded the whole thing, the video feed, so that you can kind of see uh, the results. Now we got some really interesting results. What are those six friends that we're comparing this thing to? Well, the Spark, the Mavic Air, the Mavic 2, the Autel Evo, the Parrot and Afi, and we threw in an inexpensive sub $200 drone uh, with GPS, uh, the Vizwu Zen K1. Now these results were not exactly what we thought they would be, so you're gonna wanna stick around to see how it turns out. Plus, we threw in a quick return to home. Hey, why not figure out which one of these guys is the most precise coming in for that landing? Stay tuned. Now, before we get too deep into it, let's talk a little bit about these drones and things you need to know, right? First, they're not all the same. They don't cost the same. They don't have the same ranges, so we should get some different results. Let's start with the cheapest one. That's Visual Zen K1. That is checking in at $139 and has a stated range of 500 meters. Next up, that's the Mavic Mini, the new drone, uh, starting at $399. Really, you want to spend $499, get the Fly More package. Anyway, the range on that one is 4,000 meters. Uh, the DJI Spark, that one's actually pretty hard to find. Uh, I've seen them for $300. I even saw one at Walmart the other day for $199. Yeah, it sold quick. Uh, anyway, uh, hard to find, probably going to cost you $500 if you really had to have one brand new i'm not sure why you would anyway range on that one 2000 meters then we have the dji mavic air right now it's going to cost you about 700 maybe 800 dollars again they're not super easy to find um you're going to get a slightly better camera this is the first one that's offering 4k that one has a range of 4000 meters can't forget about the paranafi that one is about 600 dollars and has a range of 4 thousand meters then there is the autel evo really a solid drone for about a thousand bucks i imagine that price is going to be dropping as they've announced the evo 2 coming out soon it has a range of seven thousand meters and last but not least the dji mavic Two, uh, both the Zoom and the Pro are slightly different in terms of price and cameras, uh, but all their features are the same. Now, the Mavic 2 Zoom starts in about twelve hundred dollars. The Mavic 2 Pro about seventeen hundred bucks, and there are packages, uh, you know, that'll obviously raise the price from there. But that's what we're dealing with here, um, and you can kind of see how they all test out. Again, some interesting results coming out of these drones. Okay, so we're gonna get rolling. Uh, Chris is going to pilot these drones. I'm going to be the visual observer. We're going to send them up one by one. Now, I understand this is by no means a scientific test, right? But we're going to do the best we can with what we got. Uh, we got uh, only one battery for some of these drones, so we're going to send it up. Uh, we're going to put it on the same exact path, and we're going to run all these drones at about 100 feet off the ground so that should give us some pretty similar results like like i said you know there's room for error and we're not you know this is not a foolproof plan but what you should be able to see is some patterns some things that kind of tell you you know one better than the other uh which ones are similar which ones are better uh lots of different things going on here take home point has been updated please check it on the map so like I said, some of these drones use different means of transmission. Most of these drones are Wi-Fi or enhanced Wi-Fi based in terms of FPV, right? FPV or first person view, that's what we're looking at. That's what really matters, right? I need to be able to see on my phone or my tablet or my screen if my you know remote happens to have one. Uh, I want to be able to see what my drone is doing from the vantage point of the camera, right? It's like being in the cockpit. 
I personally love to fly FPV. You can see I've got my uh, DJI FPV drone back behind me. Lots of fun, right? Now flying an aerial photography drone, a little bit different. Typically you don't wear the goggles, you're just dealing with the screen, uh, but you still need to be able to see what's going on right? Um, I need to be able to line up my shots. So as you can see, we're, we got these drones up in the air. We're flying them. Uh, we're going to do a one at a time so you can see these flights are no longer than, you know, two minutes a piece before we tend to, uh, tend to lose signal. Um, so we're just going to fly them to the point where you can't see anymore. Uh, we're going to figure out what that distance was and kind of talk about when did we get glitches and when did we actually lose transmission. And at that point, we're going to enable the return to home feature, which generally speaking, I don't like to use the return to home. I like to bring my my uh, drones in manually. I like to be in control. But, you know, we figure, hey, this could happen. You could lose uh, video transmission. You're not able to see the drone. Now, typically, you can still control the drone beyond your uh, your your image transmission. All right. So that's where the range is are at right the range is the ability to control the drone now that is almost always in all cases further than you can actually see on your screen now if you're not watching line of sight um, you know that's a problem but always keep your drone within line of sight the home point has been updated please check it on the map Okay, so we're starting with the Mavic Mini. Like I said, we're gonna do each one one by one. Uh, I'm actually running the video here at one and a half times speed, so it's a little bit quicker. Uh, so Chris is getting up to about 100 feet, and uh, he's just gonna fly that straight path out over the houses, uh, over the park. Uh, lots of Wi-Fi interference going on. You saw a little tiny glitch there, but it kind of recovered, no big issues. Uh, 300 feet away, uh, 400 feet away, 500 feet away. We're doing okay uh, right about there we got another tiny little glitch We're starting to get a couple of little glitches getting about 800 feet now we're glitching pretty bad at a thousand feet it just yeah not flyable RC signal lost we got out about to 1052 feet away and we lost signal all right, now it is the DJI Sparks turn. We're getting the spark up in the air, about 100 feet. Chris is going to go ahead and turn off obstacle avoidance here, and that is so it'll fly a little bit faster. Otherwise, the spark is pretty darn slow. Now, you'll notice um, little twitches kind of in the video. Uh, that is an interference. Uh, remember, the spark is only a two-axis gimbal. It does the uh, other axis, the yaw axis, electronically, so those twitches there, uh, that could be related to that. Uh, actually, that is what we're looking at here. Um, so you just kind of know that. Also notice this is the DJI Go uh, or Go 4 app, I believe, rather than the DJI Fly app uh, that we're dealing with uh, with the Mini. So we're about 600 feet. Uh, the wind is kind of pushing us around a little bit. We're going to get out here to about 800 or so. We're going to start to see some breaking up, some glitching. Uh, it's going to start to glitch pretty bad here at 900, 1,000 feet really bad we're gonna lose it here um, and it's gonna come back uh, but really at this point it's done uh, spark at 1055 all right so it is the Mavic Air's turn and we're getting it up in the air uh, taking it up to 100 feet now again we're running this at one and a half times speed so it's sped up a little bit you'll see that it performs pretty much just like the Mavic Mini and the Spark yes they both use pretty much the same technology so I guess that makes sense, right? Uh, maybe the uh, antennas coming out of the legs are a little bit better on this one. Uh, so there's that. You know, here we are out over the park, 600, 700, 800 feet. You're going to notice a glitch. About 900, it's going to get pretty bad. Just over 1,000, it's pretty much unflyable. We push it to uh, about 1,100, and then it goes out. So, yeah, that is the Mavic Air. Okay, so it is our first non-DJI drone. This is the Anafi. Notice Precision Home Set. That's going to be interesting later on. And as we get it up in the air, you'll notice it's kind of glitching right off the start. That doesn't bode well for the Anafi. Um, I do really like this drone. Some great flight modes. Love the camera. Excellent uh, ability. Uh, 180 degrees. Look up, look down. Uh, really nice drone. But you're going to find out here, at least at this test, it's just not cutting it. Yeah, there's some glitches, poor Wi-Fi connection, very poor, strong interference. Yeah, we're just out 700 feet. 
yeah, we're 800 feet, uh, 900 feet, and it's gone. Yep, we didn't get to 1,000 feet. That's pretty brutal. All right, it is the Autel Evo's turn. Uh, we're going to get this up in the air, and as we do, Chris is going to notice that it's in meters. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, skip the part where we switch in the menu from uh, meters to feet, so you don't have to worry about that. Now we've done that. It's in feet, so you, you know, an easy conversion, and uh, we're going to get going. We're also recording all of these in 1080, 30 frames a second, so just so you know. Now, the Evo is a fantastic drone. I really like it. Uh, for a 1000 bucks. it just might be the best drone you can get for a $1,000. Actually, a little bit less than a $1,000, and I suspect that price is coming down. You'll notice the picture is pretty crisp, um, and we're pushing past 800, 900 feet before we get any glitches. Uh, pretty solid. There's a signal video link low that was right around a thousand feet, but we're still going. We do have some glitches here at 1200 past 13, 1400 feet. Obviously the video is looking worse here. 1600 feet. Uh, okay. 17, 18 doing all right. Still going some glitchy. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this 2000 feet. Now we're gone. Uh, still moving. Yeah. Past 22, 22, 11, 14. I got nothing. We're bringing it back. Okay, it's the Vizuo's turn, and uh, you know what? I'm actually not going to speed this one up because I don't have to. So people want to know, how do these $200 uh, Wi-Fi GPS drones do? Well, they look like this. You see the shaky video? Uh, this is just Chris getting it up to height now, where this one we're not going to be able to change to feet. So 34 meters, it's a little high, I think, maybe. It's right around 100 feet. Um, you know, there's no image stabilization it's just, you know, it does things. It, it, you know, it has a return to home. It has some features, intelligent flight modes-ish. Um, but, you know, look at the camera. This is the quality you're going to get. Um, shaky image. So, all right, as we start to fly it, you know, we're 14, 17, 20 meters out. We got a glitch. Um, 30, 50 meters out, and we lost transmission. Uh, you can still fly it. You see we push it to about 84 meters, um, and then we have to return it. Home. 50 meters like 150 feet away you know not great so this is the Mavic 2 Pro uh, it is the most expensive drone that we have in this test so it should do the best right well spoil alert it does <laughs> um, but uh, you might be surprised that it doesn't really I mean I was expecting a little bit more to be honest um, you know here we are we're out uh, 300 400 feet again we've sped this up one and a half times so um, you know, the video that you're watching here is not real time. All right, so we're right around 1,000 feet. Uh, we're not really getting glitches pretty smooth. There was one uh, at 1,100 feet. Uh, at 13, 1,400 feet, another glitch there. Um, you know, now it's kind of stuttering a little. 16, 1,700, 1,800 feet, still pretty darn good. Uh, now we're out 2,000 feet, some glitches here and there. 21, 22, ah, just antenna. So Chris is going to slow it down, see if we can adjust the antenna. We're out at 2,390 feet uh, adjusting the antennas. We're going to try and push it a little bit further than we can. Uh, but, you know, at the end, uh, here we get to 26, 27, and boom, it's gone. Pretty good, but uh, not as well as uh, I thought it would do. So really, when it comes down to it, I think the Mavic Mini, the Spark, the Mavic Air, all pretty comparable. I was disappointed by the range in the Parrot. Um, I knew that the Wi-Fi uh, inexpensive drone wouldn't be that great. The Evo outperformed all the inexpensive drones, and of course, the Mavic 2 was king. Um, could they have been better? I would have hoped so, but uh, you know what? Lots of Wi-Fi interference definitely limits your range. You know, if you're going to do things like this, make sure that you always have someone watching. You're always keeping your drone within the uh, line of sight and uh, you're being safe. So let's get to those landing tests. Now I'm not going to show you how they all come in for a landing. I think that's kind of boring. Uh, we'll bring them in and uh, you can just kind of see how close they got to their takeoff point. Okay, so the furthest from the target was the Visuo, about 12, 15 feet away at the top of the screen. And then we have the actually Mavic Mini, about three and a half feet away from the target, followed by the Spark, that's about two, maybe one and a half feet away. And then uh, the Mavic Air, the Mavic Air, about a foot, foot and a half. I actually had to land it, it was just kind of hovering. Evo is the first one to actually hit the target, pretty darn good. Uh, then actually the Mavic 2, um, also on the target, pretty darn close. Uh, but it was the Parrot Anafi with its precision landing that hit the target on the money. Let's see it in action. Hey, yo. 
man. Oh, we got a winner. <laughs> wow. <coughs> okay, so now, what does this all mean? Well, it kind of looks like the DJI drones, the inexpensive ones, the ones that are not the Mavic 2, are roughly kind of the same, right? Uh, right around a thousand feet is was our max, give or take, right? So, you know, is the Air or the Spark or the Mini really better? Uh, you know, they're they're probably using the same technology, so they produce similar results, right? So that is what that is in terms of video transmission for those. Uh, the Anafi, kind of disappointed in that one. I expected that to be, you know, kind of right up there uh, with those three DJI drones. Now, people ask all the time, hey, shouldn't I just get one of these inexpensive Mavic clones? Really, I'm not a fan, right? These There's a ton of drones that are just under $200, like the Vizuo Zen K1. And as you can see, it you know, it just is not in a, it's, it's not even in the same category. But people ask, so you don't know that, right? And, and also notice how jittery that footage was. There's no image stabilization. So you're gonna have much worse range and your cameras are just not gonna be anywhere near any of these other drones. All right, then it comes down to the uh, to the big two, right? The Autel Evo uh, outperformed the uh, inexpensive DJI drones. Really, for a thousand dollars, that Evo is a fantastic drone. Uh, 4K capability on that, really, really good. And then, of course, the uh, Mavic 2. In this case, it was the Mavic 2 Pro that we were flying uh, was the best, and that really shouldn't surprise anyone. Um, but you know, it didn't do as well as we had hoped. Um, you know, it, it it broke up a little over 2,000 feet, which was, again, kind of disappointing. So really, uh, overall, I was disappointed by these results. But we're flying at a really noisy area in terms of uh, interference and Wi-Fi and things like that. So it makes sense that you're going to get worse range. Now, if we were to take these out of the countryside and do this test again, the results would probably be different, right? I don't know that the the uh, order in which the drones cut out would be different, but I think we would just get better range. Now, if someone want to do that test, go right for it. Uh, maybe we'll do that. Uh, it's getting kind of cold here outside of Chicago, so uh, probably save that one for the summer. Um, let us know what you think. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. Uh, did we miss something? Is there something we're, we're overlooking? Love to hear from you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. Uh, there are affiliate links down below if you want to help support the channel. That's one way to do so, um, but you don't have to. Um, anyway, uh, good luck and uh, happy flying.